Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at, once again in TNO, the whole series of Europe, in which right now, we're still kind of doing doing a lot of the focuses off screen here, doing, you know, Source 4 materials, Chase of Sun, um, but I did want to show you, this immediately popped up, Burgundy is about to collapse. Um, we have, wow, holy crap, he got older and fatter, holy crap, he is, oh my goodness, he's fighting these guys. Nouvelle Etat Francais, uh, uh, led by Christian de la Mazière, uh, is also a dictator. Um, we also have this group over here, Henri Gurus, where the red poppy movement, a bunch of socialists. Do they have unique focus? They do not. Actually, do you? I kind of doubt you would as well. Um, you are followers of esoteric daddyism. Uh, the Burgundian system, of course, they're not a member of any sphere. You guys are not a part of any sphere as well. The shadow state, shadow economy. Sorry, I'm, we're taking a long look at this because this is the first time I've actually seen this happen. Ooh, I love Rodomo. I do need to play this Burgundy again sometime. Hopefully that this faction has been fixed, because last time I played it wasn't really that great. Um, let's see, we also have... What up here? Oh, we have... Vlamse National Seat, led by Bert Eriksson, which I'm sure has no any focus tree, as well as... <sighs> Mr. Screamer. Leon de Grel, thank goodness. And the SS Walloon Division as well, which is very, very nice. He goes no focus tree, but yeah. I've never seen the collapse... But I have a good feeling that Burgundy is probably not going to last, as the French state is probably under Pierre Pujad, probably going to end up trying to kill these guys off. But regardless, I did want to show you that, just in case you've not seen it before, because I know I haven't. And this is a disgusting picture of uh, Heiner, Himmler, Heinrich Himmler. But uh, yeah, we'll keep going on, and I'll see you in just a little bit. A war without end. Guthrum Wagner placed excitedly in front of a large map on the wall, which prominently featured his recent conquests. His generals still seated eagerly waited their fears words with a slight hint of fear for their own lives, as was routine. Yes, when I marched on the Bashkirs, they called me a madman. When I went to war with the Bolshevik scum, they called me a fool. When I sent my brothers to conquer beyond the Urals, they claimed it could never be done, and yet here we are. Make no mistake, my brothers, the Reich is on the march. Uh, 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 who called you on those things, my fear? The voice halted Wagner in his tracks. He turned on one foot towards the seated commanders. Who said what? Tell me now, which one of you was it? Was it you, Schneider? The commanders all immediately looked at General Schneider, confirming his guilt. I effing knew it. Always with a stupid goddamn questions with you, isn't it? The Jews, that's who, and the Zionists. They all laughed at me as though I was the funniest joke they'd ever heard. <clears throat> do you, do any of you think I am funny? There was a silence. The generals wondered if there was another one of the Fuhrer's trick questions. Answer me, darn it. No, mine Fuhrer, they all said in unison. The young Fuhrer turned back to his map. Good, because I assure you, there's no laughing matter. Soon my Reich shall stretch from the Bolo to the Pacific. And when the day comes, every injustice and mockery they have subjected our race to will be repaid in full. Dark clouds gather over Russia as we are extending the system. The hotlands of the Reich are testament to the strength of Aryan rule. Only the pure hold the reins of power and all of the ill-bred Slavic mongrels in other place. The balance, this balance, carefully forged by the ingenious statesmanship of Führer Wagner, is what maintains stability and order for the privileged citizens of the Reich. Sadly, the situation in the West Siberia is a different story entirely. Despite the end of hostilities, the subhuman rabble still do everything in their power to resist her will. This disgusting state of affairs cannot be allowed to continue. Woe betide the inferior races of Siberia, for Gestapo shall come to remind them of their inferior status from the barrel of a gun. Great. And the call of the world. Let none deny now. The brother is on the path to unification. Reunification. The Zionist global order may try to suppress this fact as much as they can, but you cannot hope to cover up our deeds forever. The Reich is on the march. And her territories grow. Only one fine obstacle lies in her path, and unless they are completely blind, the world is taking notice. Let us send a message to be heard around the globe. Aryan rule over Russia is on the horizon, and soon we'll be able to any other turn to any other nation who dares to conspire against the master race. Let the Jew, the Bolshevik, and the subhuman alike tremble in fear. Fear of Wagner will not rest until their grasp on the world has been broken. A total war economy, decreased GDP growth, and an economy will become more centralized. Oh boy. Purification of Siberia, decreased GDP by 4% and decreased growth as well. Oh boy. A total war economy? Um, uh, Maybe war to the vanquish first. Yeah, let's do that one first. The Reich has become the greatest eastern vanguard of the forces who fight for Aryan supremacy. We are on the verge of finishing what the Germans started 20 years ago, and soon the largest nation on earth will stand by their side in the eternal struggle against the Jew. At the end of the day, our conquest will arm on behalf of Germany and their interests, for they were the ones who opened our eyes in the first place. Let us send warm, more war messages to Germany, expressing our gratitude and assuring them that we are slowly but surely accomplishing their goals for the East. They did not listen to the past, and the reason why should have been obvious. Now that our task is nearly complete, maybe they'll be more open to our call? Perhaps, perhaps. A warning to the world. Guthrum Wagner walked triumphantly to the balcony, standing tall over the thousands of his brothers who had come to watch. The crowd, consisting entirely of Brotherhood members, erupted into a cataclysm of furious chanting as their Fuhrer became visible. 
Wagner was to make a speech today. A warning for the entire world to hear. He did not care whether it was listened to or not. Uh, brothers, I come to you today, not just to celebrate a glorious victory in the East, but to declare our mutual intentions to the world in no uncertain terms. Our brothers have claimed a well-earned victory against the subhuman hordes of the East, and the borders of the our mighty Reich continue to grow. The Zionist pigs who run of the international show have done everything in their power to slow down our unstoppable progress and failed every single time. The eternal Jew, no doubt, looks upon the progress we've made and feels true fear for the first time in nearly 30 years. They know that the grip on the world is tenuous, and all it would take to break it is for the Aryans of the world to claim their destiny as the true inheritors of the Earth. I speak now to the subhuman nations of the world. Once our Reich stretches from the great river of the west to the great ocean of the east, we should turn our eyes to the rest of the, your illegitimate tyrannical states. The great crusade against Judeo Bolshevism, started by Adolf Hitler, shall continue under my guidance. Let our German brothers rest easy, for I shall take up their great burden. The crowd began chanting once more, and Wagner was all too happy to bask in the glory. Heil victory. And then take up the mantle. Spend a little more money, that's okay. The greater German Reich remained silent to reply even now. How foolish were we to assume that they would even receive us when our greatest test is still unfinished? We're not entirely sure what exactly their goals are for us, but we can assume that they involve, at least in the short term, the total conquest and purification of Russia. We do not need the per permission to continue our crusade because we already have it. Fur Wagner has, only got, has it on good authority that the Germans are greatly interested in our efforts, and we should see us achieve our goals in their, on our own initiative rather than that at the whims of another. Let us embrace a role. We are the defenders of the Aryan race, standing at the front lines between civilization and Masonic Zionist tyranny. Well, everyone, as we saw at the beginning of the episode, well, Germany is invading. Well, Burgundy. The Black Sun is set. So we'll see what happens with them. Um, yeah, that's, uh... Oh. Wow. Oh, boy. Yeah, we'll see what happens. If they have up to 68 divisions, which means they must have reformed very, very well, that's not very good for us, because that's going to be really difficult to beat. But... How about we do a slave cast? Which you get more growth, but more inflation, lose stability, industrial expertise will get worse, as well as academic base. But the ideal society envisioned by our beloved Fuhrer of Guthrum Wagner is one divided by castes. The master race, the Aryan, is meant to leave. Power in the right comes through the merit of blood above all else, and those who do not meet these demanding requirements fall into the second, the cast, the second, the second cast, the subhuman. The inferior races are genetically predisposed to subservience, and this fact makes some idea for one thing, one thing only: hard labor and the service of betters. The air relentless toil shall build the basis of a new Aryan society, a nation that puts the interests of the race above all else. Let us worry not about those who do not share this vision, for they will forever be nothing more than the beasts of burden, uh, of burden for the Reich. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. Are we making more divisions? Ah, oh, we have finally the tanks. Look at that. I don't want more divisions. I just want better divisions. Uh, you know what? You can be promoted. Get some armor there too. It's fine. Taking up her mantle. A slave cast. Ah, oh, deafening silence. Schwarz took a deep breath and entered his Führer's office. Guthrum Wagner only t called for him when something was wrong. His heart sank as his eyes immediately met Wagner's, who was seated at this desk with his hands folded. Sit. The foreign minister did as he was asked. I wrote a carefully worded and thoughtful letter to our brothers in the West and ordered you to have <clears throat> it delivered. But did you do as I asked? Of course, my Führer. I personally ensure that it was sent. You have my word. Well, that's rather peculiar then, isn't it? Because, if you can recall, I have given that order nearly a month ago, and yet I've still not received a response from Germany. So either my infallible German brothers are ignoring my plight, or if my incompetent foreign minister has once again failed the incredibly simple task I'd given him, God effing darn it. Wagner punctuated his sudden outburst by throwing a stapler at Schwarz. The minister meekly threw his arms up in defense, deflecting the projectile. I should kill you, you effing imbecile. My dreams of a pandemic unity are in ruins because some inv invalid doesn't know how to mail a effing letter. As Schwartz fought to hold back tears, Wagner's demeanor took yet another sudden turn. Or perhaps a Zionist have sabotaged your efforts. Yes, they would do everything in their power to prevent an alliance like this. Schwartz let a silent breath of relief. One of these days, he thought, he wasn't going to leave his office alive. Or this office. Is nothing safe from Judean treachery? Of course not. Work for your life. Oh, actually, you lose political power, monthly population, research speed. You get more output and you get more growth, though. Hmm. I don't lose any more political power because we're going to really need that for later. So, a total war economy? Oh, it's going to hurt us pretty badly. War is a natural state of the right. Our beloved civilization simply cannot know peace since our shared dream of Aryan overlordship over the world has been achieved, despite our recent victories in the field. This day is still far off indeed. The crusade against the eternal Jew will only escalate from here, and the Reich will need every single pair of hands that does, still does not hold a gun. Look at this. The slaves work tirelessly to manufacture war material for our purposes, but this is not enough. Those on the home front, too, must do their part. If they cannot go into battle, they will go to work in the assembly lines. There's no such thing as a civilian. Every single citizen of the Reich will do everything in their power to work towards the goal of ultimate victory, soldier or not.
Anything else here? Because we could use more military factories, honestly. Uh, I did throw one more on consumer goods just so we can help out growth, because growth is going to be dying here. That's not bad. Uh, the debt is still getting even worse, which sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. There's not really much we can do about that. Um, we will be trying to get some heavy SP artillery as well, just because we're going to need it. Especially if I want to actually really de de destroy that 5 million manpower that, uh, oh, look at that, nice. Uh, Speer has, so. A future in chains. Yuri felt like a sardine in more ways than one. Here he was. In a crowd consisting of thousands of chained men with barely enough space to breathe. The barbed wire fences kept the prisoners penned in like helpless chickens, forced to wait for hours on end while their fates were determined. The intercom let a piercing shriek as it came to life, and a gruff voice began audible. Became audible. All slaves, please direct your attention to the tower on your left. Yuri reluctantly did as the voice said. I saw a large man standing atop the watchtower who lo looked quite pleased with himself soon. Nearly every prisoner had turned their gaze upon at the man, who seemed as though he was preparing to give a speech. He cleared his throat and raised a megaphone to his face. Salutations, I am Dietrich Meyer, but you may call me Master. Rejoice, for you have been given a rare opportunity indeed. You see, you belong to a race that wields a long and proud tradition of subservience to the betters. The world may have forgotten this role over the millennia, but we have not. Good your work with confidence, for your sacrifice will become the building blocks that make up the greatest civilization the world has ever seen. This man, in so many words, has essentially condemned Yuri to die laboring away for a regime that considered him worth less than dirt. He heard the shrill sliding of Meadow's gates to the work camp opened at last. Yuri closed his eyes as the spirit overtook him. A cruel existence. And the purification of Siberia. Oh, that's going to hurt so bad. The Reich's purification efforts in Russia are progressing well, but it's clear that we need to expand our policies of racial purity beyond the Urals as well. Siberia is a vast land that is absolutely infested with subhuman trash who hold del foolish delusions of an identity that is distant or distinct even from that of the Slav. We Aryans see them as what they are, yet more races of low birth who serve no more purpose than to toil in our name. We'll transform Siberia into the Aryan paradise it was always meant to be. People of good ethnic stock will be encouraged to settle in the new territories, and those who are not yet will be put in chains. Soon the world will bear witness to the persistence of Aryan culture when it begins to thrive even the hardy conditions of the East. <clears throat> And, of course, after this, we'll do just like old times. Half a million manpower is not enough. But we still have a great deal of ground to cover before the fierce dream of a Reich stretching from the Volga to the Pacific can truly be realized. Well, we have no doubt they are superior uh, to the uh, inhuman foes who stand before us. The Wehrmacht must adapt their strategies if, we, if they wish to tackle this daunting obstacle with any degree of efficiency. When in doubt, look to our German brothers. During their invasion of the USSR, the Germans were able to traverse enormous spans of territory thanks to their near-total motorization of their forces. We should take another yet page from the book and attempt to make an effort to increase the mobility of our own forces. If successful, we'll be able to commence an overwhelming blitzkrieg upon the Untermensch, like the likes of which has not been seen in decades. An act of defiance. Vladimir let a pain, gruff, and cough, a peculiar met metallic taste filling his mouth. Oh god, that's so bad over here. The Gestapo had got him good, and he only had enough strength left in him to stumble away from the fighting before the pain overtook him. The rest of his comrades in the Black League had fought bravely when the Brotherhood's dogs discovered their cell, but there were simply too many. Vladimir had long since been trained to care little for the odds. Survival was never a priority in the League. He groaned as he heard heavy footsteps drawing near. Vladimir put a hand in his coat to prepare the final card he had to play. He would be darned if he let these monsters take him alive. Soon enough, a squad of Gestapo cautiously entered the room. Vladimir had taken refuge in. So, the weekend Wehrmacht has hunted us down at last. Took you long enough. Your little war is over, scum, one of the Gestapo snarled. The men drew even closer, visibly losing their tension as they realized Vladimir posed little threat in the state. Perhaps, but there's something you fascist pigs still, still don't seem to understand. Oh, really? What would that be? We Russians, Vladimir said, pulling an arm bundle grenade from his coat, are not the type to take defeat lying down. The Gestapo immediately flew into a line, panic, quickly turning to make a break for the door. The blast was quicker, and the explosive, consumed, the explosive force consumed every living being in the room. Now the Emperor with a bang. Well, that sucks. Yeah, that's not good. We need more growth. Oh my goodness, it's not good. Uh, liberate the Aryans. Yes. Despite the overwhelming influence of countless inferior races, even a place like Siberia contains those of proper reading. The pure men and women of this land have long suffered under the domination of Judeo-Bolshevism. The sacred blood slowly dwindling as the races of the East conspire to breed them out of existence. Now, that the soldiers of the Reich have asked control away from the subhumans, the Aryans of this region can finally breathe a sigh of relief. We have no doubts that they will welcome their brothers with open arms and rejoin them in the arduous quest to forge a thousand-year Reich. Hey, better military professionalism, finally! Just like the Germans in the East. Better military professionalism. So, we replace a dysfunctional high command with widespread cronyism. We actually need more supply now. Oh god, no. And we lose max planning, that sucks. The brother needs blood. Oh crap, if you're wondering about that, please go right ahead. That's so dumb, I hate that one so much. I don't know why we can't just do it whenever that happens. Um, I know it's supposed to fire from one eventually, but like, I'm not gonna wait. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna wait. Uh, decision dot new checks. It doesn't make any sense why we'd have to wait for that. I'm not even doing this for the manpower. 
So, one man's trash. Stuff but fun. Pa spent his entire life watering. Metaphorically or literally. Through his childhood, he entered the Hitler Youth only because his mother forced him to. Throughout his teenage years, he only did acceptable in, in schoolwork because that is what he was supposed to do as an Aryan. And once he entered college, he joined the SS because it was better than getting some nonsense job in Germania. And when his squad, the Dovanga Brigade, charged into Russia after some failed uprising in the capital, Stefan followed them because it was easier than doing something else. He stole, butchered, and even raped. During it all, he found nothing. An empty vessel, traveling through, wandering, always transient. Even when Dovanga himself died, the Brigade was no more and he followed some of his fellow bandits only because it was easier than finding something new. Now, though, as he wandered through the towns of Russia, the place of the inferior Slav, he was not only tolerated, but welcome. The magistrates and authorities, often more than not, gave Stefan special privileges, including the raiding of so-called inferior villages. He was confused, oft more often than not. Hadn't he been one of the men responsible for some of the most evil atrocities imaginable? Had he, hadn't he been a monster? Still, Stefan did not question it. However, much like the rest of the former brigade, perhaps Stefan thought in the innermost recesses of his mind, they were just as unwilling to think of anything differently. An empty mind is easily filled with nonsense. Bring down the jackboot. Poverty will get to worse, become worse. Well, god dang it. Like so many rats, the subhumans have turned Siberia into the nests and have horrid breeding ground for racial impurity. It falls to the Aryans of the Reich to become their exterminators, cleansing the region to make way for the ultimate purification of Russia. For too long they have conspired against their race, plotting their own rise to dominance. At the expense of the Aryan, we will repay their foolish delusions of grandeur and kind and class them in irons. The subhumans of Siberia will work themselves to death in our industry, and those who cannot will be cast aside with extreme prejudice. The armies of the Reich have come to Siberia and we're here to stay. <clears throat> Say more different day. Janus Mendrix wandered the broken down village, smog and suits falling as a few survivors tried to put out the fires in the church. Glass crunched under his feet as one of the men gave him an update to the situation. These raiders, calling themselves the Aryan Brotherhood, have burned down half of our strongholds by the military and civilian. What they haven't taken, they're burning, and what they aren't burning, they're raping and murdering. Mendrix didn't respond. <clears throat> I simply thought of how long he had been doing this. For over two decades, he had been the leader of the Guard, the first line of defense against raiders. He tried to protect the people to the best of his abilities. And yet, had it all been for nothing, as this new group, the most evil, most powerful group he had encountered, had taken over Russia and was now salivating over the new untouched victims of the Urals? Had every sacrifice been for nothing? No, Mendrick sought. The Guard, as always, and forever would be the protector of the people. Even when everything seemed hopeless, as long as there was a man or woman in danger, they would be there, even if they had to fight from the shadows and the darkness of inns and cellars. Sirs, said the adjunct concern. Evacuate as many civilians as possible. Once that is done, we must move further south, making whatever contacts we can. Yes, sir. The adjunct left, leaving Mendrix to his own thoughts as the church began to collapse in on itself. The guard will never stop to protect the Russian people. <clears throat> yeah, bring that job with the uh, Pacific Crus Crusade, huh? Not bad. That's a 95% poverty rate, not bad. The search for the perfect man. Alexander could feel sweat trickling down his head. He made it to stand in a line with the nearly hundred other men assembled before a special committee of Brotherhood officials. Alexander had been pulled off the street by the Brotherhood's goons as he was walking home one night and assumed at the time he was being sent to the slave mines. Instead, he even selected to join the Aryan Brotherhood's armed forces. His fair hair and blue eyes being the most likely source of their interest, now he was to be carefully examined for his racial purity, which made Alexander nervous beyond belief. Despite his appearance, he was half Kazakh. The committee's men arrived at the man next to Alexander and immediately began to closely examine his face with the doctor's proficiency. Hmm, yes, hmm, beautiful eyes, a pure complexion. The official muttered, pawing across the man's jawline. Wait a minute. Alexander glanced at the officer who had taken out a series of photographs or photos that he could not see from where he stood. That nose is clearly of a Semitic phenotype. Guards on cue. The brotherhood soldiers emerged to drag the unfortunate soul away. His terrified screams echoed off as he was pulled further out of sight. A distant gunshot could be heard as the officials arrived at Alexander. His eyes were wide and he fought every synapse in his body to avoid shaking. Now this is more like a well-defined nose. Ooh, strong jawline. A true Aryan specimen, no doubt. An official beyond the officer checked something off his notebook and the group proceeded to the next man. Alexander would live for now, but somehow he still felt like, no, he, still felt like he had no comfort. A sheep among wolves. Casually killing off her own manpower, thanks game, but work for your life. Hard labor for good, for the good of the Reich is not punishment, but a mercy. The subhumans who now work tirelessly in our factories and mines may look upon us as monsters for enforcing our will upon them, but they do not realize that labor is the only, their only purpose. The master race leads and everything else must fall below in their wake. This is merely the natural order of things. As a matter of fact, our slaves should be thinking or be thankful for the opportunity that we've given them. After all, if we cannot find a use for these mongrels, we would have to liquidate them. The slaves will work far work as far as the feeble bodies can take them, and if some cannot handle the tasks that are given, then they will suffer the consequences of failing to meet our expectations, which would be most, most unfortunate. Expanding costs. Oh, hopefully we have less costs now. Ooh, 85 billion is not good. I'm actually getting really worried about this, because why does the military cost so much? Why does it cost so much? Just 
cost so much, man. We're already are really, 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 really low. Hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one too. I think we need that as well. Work for your life. The Pacific Crusade. The Reich must stretch from the Volga River in the west to the Great Pacific Ocean in the east. It is simply our destiny. Only one obstacle remains before the Aryan supremacy over Russia can be achieved, and, that is, and it is our greatest yet. The lands of Siberia are vast and uncompromising, and the difficult terrain will surely make things complicated if we are not prepared. Meanwhile, the subhuman filth know that we intend to stomp them under our boots and are digging in. This war will be glorious indeed. The Wehrmacht stands ready to begin the attack. Hardened by years of brutal fighting in the service of the Reich. The enemies who stand before them may not be of pure birth, but they make up for the glaring inadequacy with an animalistic ferocity. They will fight tooth and nail to please the Zionist masters, no, so no quarter shall be given to them. Let the world hold its breath, for the Reich marches east once again. Hi, Wagner. So we have that much cost. Actually, what I would like to see, how much does this cost to make? Do, is there a cost here? Like, get, get broken down by, like, division? Because these would probably be more costly than just normal infantry divisions, I, I would assume. I could be very wrong about that. If we could, I would probably convert all our divisions towards uh, um, tanks. Realistically, the Melbourne talks. Actually, what does uh, Burgundy look like now? Pact Commission for Frankreich. Wow. Quarter million map led by Adolf Heisinger. Oh, well, that's interesting. I haven't seen that one before, but I'll see in a little bit once we are ready and already war with pretty much the Siberian Socialist Republic. Well, everyone, as you can see, the Siberian Socialist Republic has now gone to war with, in which we probably will kick some butt here. I don't know what we're really going to do, but, you know, it's always worth trying. Maybe a little bit of a touch here and there. Uh, then again, it would help if I gave these guys orders as well. I want you guys to hold. Let the infantry move in first. Five, four, three, two. Can we try it? Now can we try it? I did throw in some anti-tank on our divisions as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. This is not going to be easy now, is it? Especially with all this lag. And also, our GDP is doing. G debt to GDP ratio is really, 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 really bad right now. This is not looking good at all. Right here. Uh, everywhere else, but here is. Well, in this one too. Go in. Go in. Oh, we're going to be losing a lot of guys doing this, aren't we? We've already lost more than they have. That's a bit ridiculous. You know what? You want to die? You're going to force the attack. Um, you guys go right here too. Yeah, this is definitely quite a bit of lag. Quite a bit of lag. Two divisions doing this? You gotta go in. 46,000 versus 32,000? Well, I mean, it, honestly, like, this nation's not easy to play. The devs definitely set it up so that they're not very successful, which makes some sense, but at the same time, yeah, 103.8%, not great. And that helped out a lot. Holy crap, Two point, almost 3 billion? That's a lot better than it was earlier. Actually, how does that affect our growth? 5% is still pretty good. An actual real 5% is not bad. So, yeah, we definitely need to take these guys out. Um, if you can just encircle them, for the love of God, please. Just encircle them. Come on, encircle. Come on, come on. We're losing th literally thousands of men right here. Come on, get in there. Oh, my God. It's frustrating that the AI just does not do what it needs to do to be successful. And I'm not going to manually just do micro everything to death no way man the time of me microing everything here is not over but like it's just not a lot of fun doing that like that this is pathetic this is really pathetic our army is really bad if that's the case you guys hold because you guys are just absolutely pathetic you guys hold as well we lost way too many men honestly I'm just going to be doing some funky stuff off screen just because we're just not set up to do very well we're just really not set up to do very well at all, which is really disappointing. I mean, that's what it is. Uh, how are you supposed to do anything? This army sucks. We have 40 com with divisions, which are using the tried true 40 com with you know templates before uh, TNO the template going gets goes back and gets updated uh, for the you know whole battle meta to be changed. But still, we have air superiority. I mean, this is really god awful. Of course, we did widespread uh, cronyism, which is god awful. But still, like, it's got to give something more than just this. It has to give them more than just this, because this is just terrible. And I don't like that the AI cheats. It, the AI is cheating. It's literally cheating that they do not get affected that much by basically exploding their economy. We, as the players, have to. Oh, they're actually attacking us. Look at that, huh? 
um, abide by the rules of the game where we have to watch the economy the entire time while AI literally doesn't, which is not fair. Like, why? Why do we have to get punished and they don't? Is there any debuffs to for them exploding their economy? Because if I tab over, I can guarantee you that they're exploding right now. They have to be. Comment turn suck and turn member. Ideological struggle. No, I'm not seeing anything here. No, yeah. The AI cheats. It cheats so hard because it doesn't know how to manage the economy generally. Not always, but generally. And we're doing the best we can, but. Hmm. Oh my god, that just knocked up by 5%. Losses include 130,000. Now they have a few higher losses. Go back in. You're gonna force the attack. Sorry, but Salvin getting 600,000 men in reserve. A bit extreme, I would say. Are there even 600,000 men or you know, people in this part of Siberia? Yeah, there are, but still. That's that's a bit extreme. Like, how do they get that much? Where, what are they on? Oh, and Ron's dying as well. Um, widespread cronyism. One party state. Factory complexes, secondary schooling, uh, ten-hour workday. Oh, look at what they have here. Mahiv, police promoted equality, gender equality decriminalized. Two. They have a two-year draft. Where are we at? Military policies. We're a two-year draft as well. So how do they? The, they should have. Well, we're about rough, roughly the same amount of manpower, which is not bad, but still. This is so stupid. I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. I mean, that's... that's with air superiority. Air superiority does nothing, then. Basically confirmed. I mean, just... You can look for yourself. All is on You want to keep attacking, then we're just going to keep attacking, too. I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm completely done. Yeah, no. The AI cheats with their economy, and we're we're just strangled by it. Hmm. Yeah, no, no thanks. You can go in here too. Look at that. What the heck? I mean, guys aren't bad. I did throw an anti-tank here, like I said earlier. You can see it right here too. Anti-tank equipment. Right there. Could probably improve that though a little bit more. Just in case, because I know the Germans are going to have a lot of it, so. Just keep taking more stuff. My god, do we need to get more, uh, stuff here. Yeah, that military spending. I just wish it was broken down further. Which part of it is costing us the most? Maintenance and logistics funding. Hmm. Actual training effectiveness. We're not going to give up the attacks. But at least with Speer here, his army is smaller, but it's probably very professional, which does suck, but still. Alright, let's move it too. There you go, there you go. When do we get there? Anyone have upgrades? No? Kind of sad. Ah, there's Felix Schneider. Oh, do we have over here? City Foreign Reactor Design? Sure, why not? Fifty-one my god. Fifty-one divisions left. I mean that's ridiculous. Give you guys a little, slight little break so we get some more max planning done. Yeah, I'm just not sure what we can do about the economy here. This is so stupid. <sighs> Even with war taxes on. And we have a time tax hike, I think. I think we do. Or maybe not. We're at 3 billion, though. That's still so flipping high. Oh, my God. Stop lagging, please. A little more planning. Actually, if anything, we're going to go right into here. 
What good you hold? And go in. Excuse me. Come on. Come on. There you go. Not bad. Uh, we need more tanks. We need some more anti-air. That makes sense. Everything else is looking pretty okay, though. Even planes are looking pretty good. We could probably improve our intelligence agency as well. Or just make one. Oh my god, stop lagging, please, for the love of god. Stop the lag. Kill every last one of them. I don't want a single enemy alive. Good. How are... No. No, the game is cheating. The game literally is cheating. If we can't beat this many divisions with 40 combo widths here... Are you flipping kidding me? Alright, well, we're going all in then. Bunch of cheating game. The AI just cheats so hard. Force it. Force it. Cheat, cheat, cheat. All you want, AI. These guys are, what, 40 combos as well, right? Yeah, they're 40 combos. They're pretty sucky. Pretty darn sucky. Good. Keep going in. How much more do we have to take? So much. Oh, my goodness. All right. Can you please stop lagging so hard? My God. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know? Sometimes it just feels like it's just unplayable when it lags this hard. Good. Overrun them. Every single one of them has to die. 100,000? Oh my god, this is... This is definitely not ready for prime time yet. Definitely not. I'm not going to deal with crap like that. Nope, that literally makes no sense. Slave Bolt in the right? Well, at least, at least they have the Slave Bolt. Oh wow, look at that. What way is Spare going to go? Oh, please go kill them all. Please kill them all and hurt yourself in your confusion. Destroying trust, huh? We'll see about that. See how much trust they have left. But yeah, I might just have to cheat ourselves for more manpower because this is ridiculous. I'm sorry, but this is stupid. This is really stupid. We'll see. I might not, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Because look at that. That's ridiculous. And they can still put up a really strong fight against us. I, I don't understand. I just really don't. Air superiority does nothing in TNO. There goes Iran. Advanced development stage. Might as well. Uh, we do need to keep some of this political power so that we can core stuff. But then again, the game's going to screw us over anyways with the whole economy thing. But still. I mean, how much more equipment do they have? They're, we finally cut off all their manpower. No, pretty much they got some trucks. That's pretty much it. The vision's still alive. Yeah, I kind of doubt it. Oh, can you actually win this battle? There's almost no one here, so you should be able to. Kind of disappointed that these guys haven't learned too much either. Even with Wagner on level 9, it's still not enough to be able to push into here. That's so incredibly sad. Uh, let's see. Falk Wagner? Hmm. Jose's gone. Goodbye, Jose. That was put down some resistance for now. Kill them off, Speer! Kill them all off! Oh, and we can do that too. That'd be very necessary for doing this. And we're gonna probably... I'm probably gonna play in a whole bunch when we're trying to fight him too, just because... He's probably not gonna be easy to beat. 
Gotta just be realistic. We need attack sykes. Unfortunate. Come on, come on. Uh, is the tank gonna learn anything? No, he's pretty bad. This is sad. Very sad. How big is this division? And yet they can afford a division like this. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. This is so incredibly sad. What the heck are you doing over there? Why would you go all the way over there? So much for trying to get tanks. The tanks, just the economy just kind of butchered TNO a little bit. For some nations. Not all, but for some at least. Hmm... This is barely going to help us for a little bit. Inflation's of 5%. They can, they can hold out. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, game. Perfect sense. Can you win here too, or are you going to struggle and just not win? This is pathetically sad. Yeah, you're done. I'm not going to come back over here. You suck. You this. Oh my god. Incredibly disappointing. Let's see, tankies. You suck so incredibly much. Sure, cost went up. Uh, anti air, we're kind of okay with that stuff. Yep, it did go up a little bit. Oh my god, how much further do we have to go? Can you win here too? No? Maybe? Force it anyways, because you can. I don't care anymore. Actually, I didn't care starting a little bit earlier too, but still. Hold on, Uda. Uh, come down there, go there, go to Cheetah. And we probably need to go all the way over here, but we'll see. Good, because we definitely need this stuff too. At least that looks a little better. Slightly better. Debt servicing is pretty bad, though. Oh! Oh! So it's just Tricor, huh? Well, the faster we could go, the faster that we can do get through this stuff. Plan going forward. Uh-oh. Barbie's not getting that much better. Hmm. Can you finish the goddamn war? Can you not kill them? This is so sad. You can barely win here initially. Oh my god. I know it's over river, but Jesus Christ, this is so stupid. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but I'm thinking the death screwed up here or something. Come on, motorized. Let's go. Better consumer goods, efficiency. We're doing better anti-air. And it looks like we probably finally won. Well, it's a Deutsche Fry core is dead, but probably not. Well, time to reunify the motherland. Research slot, we get legacy of the Siberian plan. The bonus of the Siberian plan will be reduced by 45%. Well, let's see what happens. Rise of the Rock, the decades-long battle for Russia's future, is over and is tragic and near ironic. The Aryan Brotherhood, an extremist organization located in Perm, dominates a nation under an iron heel disquietly. Similar to that of the Third Reich. The so-called fear of the one Gutrum Wagner has declared his intention to lead a true Aryan state in line with the principles of national socialism. Germany for its part has declined and responded to the development as of yet, but international observers can only imagine that the Nazi leader baffled the desire of the most hated nation to be welcomed into what they see as the master race. And Volk on Reich and Fuhrer.
Wow. That's really bad, actually. Um, so, if Zong's a surplus, I'm okay with it. But, like, all this other stuff was just a bunch of crap. It literally was just a bunch of crap. And it's pissing me off way too much. Which I do apologize for. But, let's see. Um, we can do that stuff. Honestly, I think I want to try to take out Germany. Just because they have fallen into decadence. And need to be taught a lesson. So, let's go up by... Wow, we have actually quite a few. Uh, get more civvies going, I guess, for now. Does that hurt our economy that much? 1.39 billion, that's okay. That growth is extremely bad. Um, but it's good watching Speer do this, actually. Uh, how long will he have? It doesn't really matter, because I do want to kill him in the end, anyways. But yeah, this is, this is just a bunch of crap. The way the economy is set up for us, hmm... Makes sense. But it's also a bunch of crap at the same time. I hope they're hurting very badly. And we can move in quickly. But we'll see in just a little well, bit. Well, everyone, it's now Jan June 17th, 1973. I apologize for raging a little bit earlier, but it's time to invade the Reich. Uh, I have thrown in um, the second most Russian war mods so we can actually do this. Uh, yeah, looking not too bad. We did give a lot of stock fair and square. We didn't get, we didn't cheat for manpower, like I said earlier. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure what's going to happen. Hopefully we do okay. We don't have a ton of divisions, but there's something I just, just don't understand. Like, at all. About this at all. Uh, uh, let's read this one real quick. My bad. Uh, there you go. Just because. Okay, so go over to the economy. We still have a surplus, which I'm great with. But it's all because we have an excess revenue, which I don't know exactly what that is, but like 7.7 .7 basically billion dollars comes from a sales tax at 4%. No dollars come from a tariff tax. And it only happened because we took out the Far East and got our ports here. So... Were we not, I guess, using our Congos? I mean, usually when you get our Congos, or I guess at this point, at Sengel, um, that's like, isn't that one of the, is that the one of the non-icy ports here? I could be wrong about that. I could be very wrong about like that, but we weren't using this at all before? I don't understand. So, I don't know. Apparently, I just don't understand TNO. I just, I'm still learning TNO. I still, I don't understand. It's good. We don't have enough money yet. So, hopefully we can move on in. Hopefully we do okay here. Um, Yeah. Uh, oh, and we have more production. Russia closed war in Germany. No turning back now. Our final war, pretty much. Uh, production units. Ah. Who also? Even more growth, maybe? Yes. Yes. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, we can do okay here. Um, as you tell, we've, we've enlarged our army just a little bit more. And we did a few more tank divisions, which will hopefully be okay. Good God. They're just so bad sometimes. Richland, please, thank you. Oh, we have even more production units. Nice. Alright, so that's if that's the case. There you go. See what we can do with that. And now can you do the entire front line? Thank you very much. There we go. Oh my god, oh my god, it's so laggy. Holy crap. You guys just keep doing what you're doing, so. There you go. Let's go! Hopefully we can do okay. How many divisions do they have in total? Uh, it's not bad. We have 54. Germany has a certain amount. Oh, also I do want to show you what the route that Germany went. Now the reason why we're going to go to war with these guys, at least lore-wise, is because they want the dream came true. And they did Gleichschaltung forever more. They got rid of the Gang of Four. And the conservative cause in the Reich strongly benefits from this. So, yeah. Yeah. The future of the Reich should be led by Speer and the NSDAP. Ein Volk. Ein Reich. Ein Führer. Now, it would make any sense really for us to go to war with these guys, especially if they're National Socialists. Not really too much, but you know what? They didn't answer our letters, so... They always ignored us. Does it make sense for us to go to war with these guys? Probably not too much, honestly. In his footsteps. But there can only be one Aryan leader here. Oh, did I tell you not to go? Oh, oh maybe we can't win here. They do have quite a few divisions here, which is quite kind of upsetting. But overall, not bad. How are we doing well against these guys? But we couldn't do well against Soblin. I don't understand. We only got an upgrade, and we're getting more poverty here. I don't understand this at all. Um, experience, industrial expertise, industrial equipment. We are modern industrial equipment, so overall not bad. We're doing, I think, generally, generally, not completely, but generally, better than we, we did against Soblin. I mean, this is ridiculous. This literally makes no sense. At some point. So I mean, we're not winning everywhere. Let's be realistic here. But still. It just, it boggles my mind. Sometimes how things work and sometimes they don't work. 
And we don't have air superiority. We can solve them. We had absolute air superiority as well. We gotta go in here too. Who is this down here? Rex Line Balticum. Well, it's definitely gonna be a struggle down here. Definitely a struggle. Sankt Petersburg. We lost a lot of guys so far. Oh my god, I hate this part so much. And we might not have enough divisions, honestly, on the line either, but still. You guys come up there, and deploy. Because we just need more divisions, period. There you go. Just hold for now. Are they... Are they have equipment, too? Of course, they are. They don't have some of these areas cored. Some of them they do. Yeah, that's not good. Well, at least they died. That's the most important thing. They did die, so. Oh, you guys are still going down here, huh? Please do not get encircled. If anything, I want you to get Baku. If you can get a picture of these guys, that'd be great. Tiflis, they go, they go, they go. Just don't put. Please don't get encircled. That's all I ask. Just please don't get encircled, man. And we should be able to break out regardless. But like, oof. they're actually abandoning the line as well. All right, we'll see what happens. I guess it's a bold move. Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. God, I hate this part so much. I hate fighting these guys. You're gonna force the attack. And why can't we win here? Well, the division dies, and the division dies. He's level one. Literally level one. Why? Oh my god, we can't win. Oh, yeah, this is why I don't like sometimes fighting these guys. It just doesn't make any sense sometimes. It makes no sense. Ay, ay, ay. Liberation of Moscow is very good. Usually, when we do that, they're very close to capitulating. Yeah, we're going to lose a lot. I mean, we already probably did lose quite a few divisions here already, but it's alright. Did the Norwegian boys just drink, like, a lot of milk, and that's why we can't kill them all off? Or what's wrong up here? Like, seriously. Like, ugh, this is pathetic. This is extremely pathetic. I get they don't, they're not very strong. But that's not enough to do well up here. And it's only mixed air. It's still not that bad. Can you, like, not get encircled? You know, like, could you just, just like, not? Palisburg, did they get Moscow back? God dang it, they did. Well, pop out some more divisions. There you go. Um, Better planes. I mean, obviously our planes aren't very good. Doing the best we can, given how the devs wanted us to play this nation. Curse would be nice. Yeah, no, you gotta get Moscow back. That's unacceptable. We gotta have Moscow. We lost, what, quarter million? Pretty much. Oh, that's actually good to use right now. Um, do that too. And, oh, god dang it, come on, get back here. Definitely use a cypher against him. You know, if you're gonna die, kill yourself off then. Just kill yourself off. Well, this we, they don't have Baku anymore, which is good. And that we have it too. There we go. Wait, Baku missing Russell is gone. Nice. Can't core anything here, which sucks. Which really sucks for us, but whatever. Go here. Don't let them move. Do not let them move. War temp industry is good though. Yeah. There you go, nice. Good, good. Okay, so 30 divisions left. So we have more divisions than them now. Yeah, oh my god, this is a mess. Some Hungarian boys here and there. Palisburg. Not bad, not great, not bad. 
And we're only doing this because Shapiro wouldn't return our emails or calls. I guess there is no email. Nestrom is online, though. Nope. Still have a surplus, which is nice. GDP debt to GDP is not bad. Oriole, huh? Surprised we actually didn't lose any tank divisions here yet. Very surprised, actually. Very, very, very surprised. I thought this army would be better. Because when you do the reforms, you can get like up to Spartan Discipline. Because I've gotten Spartan Discipline with Toolbox Series uh, Spare. But, uh... No. Keep them in place. That'll be good. There we go. Calcasine is gone as well. Nice, nice, nice. Keep wrapping them up. I don't understand how this is be going better for us than against Soblin. I mean, obviously I was struggling a little bit earlier, but like... It, it makes no sense. And then again, is it supposed to make sense? No idea. And we still have a surplus. Just... Hmm... All I can say is, hmm. Still active? Good, 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 good. They probably retreated a lot of their divisions back to Germany proper. Uh, Kiev it is. Kiev. Agency infiltration. Better jet casts. Ledger population, stability, war sport. Ah, and that goes vice Luthanian. Population wise. Hmm. Hey, we're not doing too bad. We're right there. Actually, we have a bigger population than Germany now. Wow. Not bad. Reichsland, Poland, eh? But we're getting closer and closer. And oh, we do have a nuclear bomb as well. Maybe you didn't know that. We do have a nuke. Well, I guess it's not here. But we do have one. Which is very nice. Oh, we're fighting Romania as well, huh? Forgot about that. Well, we're going to own all the oil fields in Europe then. At least most of them. The bow, eh? Ariga. Now we're out of manpower. That's not good. I go give her that. Now I have a little bit more manpower back. Surplus not doing too well though. Still doing okay-ish up here. Definitely okay-ish. Oslo would be nice this time of year. Mm, can you please take? You're not allowed to stop. Why'd you stop? Oh, Balticum's gone. Nice. I think for Romania, all you literally have to do is just take Budapest, Bucharest, not Budapest, it's Hungary. Uh, Philip Le Mans. And we're out of manpower again. Okay. There you go. Well, that, that, like I said earlier, we were struggling definitely here before. But I don't understand when this is easier than, to take out than Soblin. Just why? Why is it designed like this? And then there goes Romania. What is this? No, we don't need that there. Nice. I personally would like Budapest under us. Can we actually get him under us? Probably not, no. Point. Um. Ten percent. Uh, debt GDP ratio is not bad. Krakow would be good as well. Oh, we got Buc Bucharest. Nice. Get to Gyur. And the Bratislava. That'd be very nice. And Wien? 
Oh, there goes Poland. Goodbye, Poland. Goodbye, Hungary. Bratislava now. Happy November, everybody. Happy, happy November. How many divisions do they got left? 18 max. Germany hasn't really lost so many men. They just lost all their divisions. And there goes Bratislava. And the Slovak Republic. Well, demand complete German surrender. Oh, they were excellent new creator there, huh? Treat Riga. Tell Germania we accept. Alright, everyone. So, after all that extreme, extreme lag, which, honestly, just... It's not very good. But, uh, we did manage to break out here. And let's go see if we can beat up a couple more Finnish people. Jimmy Surrenders, which is very nice. The brother needs new blood. Look at that. Well, there's that. Uh, let's take a vibe break out and we'll call it camping. Yeah, I'm sorry that it just lagged so hard. It's just... It, it, TNO is almost unbearable. I'm sure for you guys, like, it's really unbearable for some of you all. Like, my computer's pretty darn good. Especially my CPU, but, like, it's gotta be god-awful for some of you guys. Like, it's so ungodly laggy. For the point where you don't even probably, probably even want to play it, because it's so bad. But it's plus looking a little better, but... Why? Why is it looking better? We didn't get that much more money. Not like military spending went down, did it? I don't understand. I don't understand the economy. I'm not going to try to pretend like I understand. It's, it just doesn't make sense sometimes. It really just does not. And, uh, Fate of Iborg. Nah, it belongs to us. You, oh my god, you better win here. These tanks, just not very good. But, luckily, they did and were able to take rightful territory. But, I think that's going to end it for me here today. Um, I've played this for quite a bit already, and... Man, TNO has definitely changed. Some for the better, some for not the better. But, if you enjoy the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.